Good morning. It is Monday, March 23rd. You may look at this video some other day, but I'm home and I thought I might share something. It's Bible time with Pastor Isley. You know what I have here? It's a book, but it's a special book. It's a diary. And diaries are places in which people keep all kinds of stories of their life and stories of things they've done. I remember one time I tried to write up a diary and I kept a diary while I was in about fifth grade. And I started it around well, maybe when I was in fourth grade. But in fifth grade, I remember writing this story. One afternoon, I decided with my brother to go ride our pony. And so I hopped on the pony. We didn't use saddles in those days. We just hopped on the pony and put a piece of string around his nose and off we went. And we're riding around and we're having a good time and we crossed a little creek, splish splash all the way across. But I didn't know is <clears throat> our pony had a certain characteristic, a certain way of doing things called home bound. Well, my brother got off to look at a, something, I don't remember what, and I turned the pony around and faced him towards home. Well, all of a sudden, our pony took off, going really fast, and I'm holding on. I held on to his neck. I held on to his mane. We're running, and we're running, and we're running, and he started to head towards home across our pasture, going very, very fast. And we're coming up near the stable where the pony was kept and fed. Well, what I didn't know was the gate was closed. Well, the pony came moving and running as fast as his little legs would carry him until he got to the gate. And you know what he did? He stopped in front of the gate. And you know what happened to me? I just went boom right up over the gate and onto the other side and I crashed onto the ground. That pony wanted to go home. Well, I quickly learned that you got to leave the gate open. There's another story that I wish I would have wrote in my diary, but it happened one night while I was at a children's camp in Pennsylvania. I was sitting at the camp with my friend Harold, and we were listening to a man tell a story of how he became a Christian. And I listened. I was only in fourth grade. And you know how it is if you have brothers or sisters, or maybe you're in fourth grade, how sometimes you listen and you listen and you don't quite understand everything. So I remember sitting there and I said, hmm, I don't understand all that he's talking about. So <clears throat> after the campfire was over, the speaker said, you may all go back to your cabins unless you want to talk to me. And I said, well, I didn't understand some things, so I thought I would go and talk to the speaker. So my friend, he said, I'll stay with you. So we waited for a few moments, and then the, the speaker, whose name was Bob, he came over and he sat next to us. And he took his Bible and he opened it to a couple scriptures, but especially the scripture of John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's, that's what I didn't understand. I said, what, how can you live forever? I mean, how can you have everlasting life? I, I thought, don't people die? I had just recently lost my grandfather. And I knew that I'd never see him again. So I thought, well, how can you live forever? And then Bob began to tell me how we all sin and do things wrong against God. And because of that, we're going to die. But after we die, we will live again, either in heaven or in a place the Bible calls hell. 
So I began to think about that, and I realized that I needed to live eternally with God. And so that night, I accepted Christ as my personal Savior. Wow, it was a wonderful night for me. And it changed my life. And here I am today at your church, pastor, getting to know you and learning all about God together. I would encourage you, if you would want to know God as your Savior, talk to your parents or when we come back to church, talk to me. We'll talk to you about what it means. But I know your parents would be able to tell you. But this is the diary. And you know, in Revelations chapter 13, verse 8, it says, your name should be written in the Lamb's book of life. It's kind of like God's diary. Now, his diary is different than ours. His ink, you know, it'll never fade. You'll never be able to tear out the pages. It won't fall apart. It'll always be his diary. But in that Lamb's Book of Life, when someone becomes a Christian, the name gets written in that book. And God looks at that name and says, Oh, back when Lance was in fourth grade, he became a Christian. He became a follower of me, God says. What excitement that is to know that we can be written into the book of life. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's story about my diary. Oh, I could tell you some other stories. Someday, when you see me again at church, ask me about the milk and prune juice story. Milk and prune juice. Oh, I can hardly tell you that story. But if you ask me, I'll tell you that story someday. Have a good day.